Okay, so I just got my Blazin Bell Tech bunk beds here. Spent the past little while getting all my insulation done. So I've just taken out of the box so far. I've got the beds here, you can see. And they come with two sets of these plates. And I got two of these that I'm installing. And over here on the inside of the trailer, you can see where I've been insulating and I took down everything, just got it back up. Putting together these parts on the short wall, the one that has the door on it. There's just, uh, as you see, there's enough space on both ends to be able to do that. And the instructions are pretty here and they're pretty obvious. Make sure it's level. We've got two of these long plates that are held together by an uh, assembly plate here. They use a simple hex nut and a screw underneath. And we've got one set for each of the two. We've got a, a top set and a bottom one. And then I guess you just attach the beds. And on my trailer, I've got this cheesy, I don't know if you can see it, but it's really cheesy, what I would call S-frame. It's barely, it's not even box frame, or it's not even C-channel, it's, it's this weird, crappy S-frame. It kind of holds everything together. You see, it's this is the open end, and then it's closed here, and then there's a plate back there, so it's like an S-shape. So I've been welding on and reinforcing with box, uh, steel as best I possibly can. In some cases I couldn't find steel the right size, so it's, it's a little bit sketchy, but at least I've added some more rigidity to it for now. So I've got some extra plates back there that should just make sure that that isn't going to cause too much of a problem. Anyway, I'll get started and see how it goes. Alright, so, so far so good. I've got the plates on there, at least loosely. I'm just making sure I have it on the right space. I've got enough space here to be able to do it on both ends. Obviously I want to make sure it doesn't overlap on the light switches and stuff I'm still installing. So that way I'll have enough space. should just have enough and I know I'll have enough on the longer wall. But so far that's what the bolts together. The next issue, making sure my trailer was level. It wasn't previously but looks like we got it on track now. So now that I know the trailer's level by lowering the, the the hitch up front, now I know I can install these level. It looks like the bottom one is installed 13 inches off the ground. So I'll just measure that up and we'll go from there. Okay, so I finally got that piece on. Tried to bolt it as much as possible. See to the stud there, you can follow the lines. I put bolts in and around those as much as possible, top and bottom. But you can also see, didn't have as many uh, down that way. I uh, put a bunch of them just into the wood, but they seem to bite pretty hard without using anchors, so that's good for now. And you can see, not only at the trailer level, but I'm level right on this thing too, so I feel pretty good about that. And now the next one above it goes up 40 inches. So that's 13 from the bottom. The next one's 40. So we'll do that one too. Another thing of note with the, uh, the way these are done. You see here it explains which ones to use, which screws. So you've got the inch longs that are meant to put the uh, uh, and the self-tapping screws for mounting the rails to the trailer. You've got the three-quarter long self-tap screws for mounting the sleeper to the rails. So there's the three-quarter ones to mount to the rails. And there's the one inches to mount the actual thing into the into the studs here. Now I use them all in the bottom one. It's not a big deal. I've got plenty of extras. But uh, yeah, there you go, good thing to note. And there's the ones, of course, for the plate. You just have the regular nuts and bolts. The only thing that sucks is that these, these nuts 
these nuts are completely different size than these ones. I think these ones are, let me see, yeah, so the, the hex nuts are 3 8 but I think these ones are 9 16 or something like that. It was some weird metric number, so anyway, just a note. Okay, it's starting to get dark, something I'm going to call it, but you can see i got the bottom ones on, right down there. I found it easiest to lie it flat on the ground there. Just lift up this end, get one screw in here, then run over there quickly and put that in, one screw in, then back and forth until you've got all three screws in on each side. And the reason I did that before I installed up here, because even though I know it's 40 inches, it's a little bit ambiguous. I wanted it to be perfect, so I decided to install the bottom one first. Then I'm going to put the marks of these brackets here on the wall. So I can line those up so I'm sure that it's uh, exactly where I want it and not just by the 40 inches mark. I'll be able to see I'll have just enough space. I've calculated it the width out. I'll have uh, just about a foot to uh, have both bunk beds in, believe it or not. So it should fly. I'll pick it up again tomorrow. All right, it's a new day. And I went ahead from yesterday and did the other bars. So yesterday I did the one down below, and I put this one in. Now the funny thing is, I tried to make it painstakingly perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if you can see, it's there's a difference there. They're not quite perfectly lined up, and yet I had no problem installing the brackets on either side. The exact same set of holes that are on the bottom ones. So I'm kind of pleased with that. The only problem is that I wasn't able, because it's off the same axis as the one below, just by about a half inch or so, I wasn't able to get the things needed into the studs as I wanted. There's no hole there. The only one I was able to get was over there. So there's only really one stud I got into. But from what I can tell, the way this thing works, it doesn't actually put any weight on there, except for when I have it sat up. It really is putting all the weight on the leg here, and it's just kind of holding it there. So even when you're on top, it's only going to put your body weight, 100 pounds or so. But it's not, most of that's going to be over on here on this bar as well. So it's really just kind of holding it in place there, which makes it pretty easy. So, long story short, looking pretty good. Going to do. All right, we installed the first set, which everyone pretty much saw. So now I'm going to do it on the second wall. I have, I uh, can't remember, 64 inches across, I think, in here. These stick out uh, five and three quarter inches. My four-wheeler that goes in here is exactly 50 inches, so there's enough space left over to have two sets of these and park a four-wheeler. It's tight, but it's doable, and so that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to install the next one on this wall here, about the same distance away. And it's the same process again. You see here, <clears throat> I just turn it upside down. You have to adjoin the plates with the assembly plate, which is pretty simple to do. I just put the nuts on the other side. Snap this on, tighten the nuts, and then I have that whole piece. And then it's just a matter of marking the wall 13 inches and 40 inches. Hang them and put on the things. It's a lot easier than I expected. So I will continue to document the process. Well, there you have it. The completed project. I've got them on both sides now. This is only a uh, six foot wide trailer, so I was able to fit two of them in. And I still got a foot between them. Uh, I can, I'm a pretty slim guy, but I can still fit through them pretty easily. And I know my kids will be able to do that too. I have you back from the inside there. You can see there's plenty of space. Now, the neat thing is when these are up, I am going to be able to still fit my 50 inch wide four wheeler in here. 
It's about 64 inches, I think, wide total of actual space uh, due to the uh, you lose an inch or two on each side as a result of the walls. But here, here I'll try and uh, pop this up so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to lift this up now on this side and it just kind of tucks in and down here on the bottom they included some straps you can see here straps on this side as well and this will hold it together I've actually wrapped it around the bracket there I'm gonna snap it in and that should keep it from falling down when I'm traveling, when the thing's in motion. And the same on the other side here. I'll put it, both of them up so you can get an idea. <sighs> Doesn't take much force to get them going. But, there you go. And both of them take about five and three quarter inches on, on each side, so you're not giving up a hell of a lot of space but you are getting basically four beds for it. So I think it's, uh, it's a no-brainer. It's totally worth it. Lengthwise, they're about 78 inches long, I think, in the instructions. 77 and three quarters. So on a 12 foot long trailer, I still have a good bunch of feet up here that I can do plenty more with. That's a whole other project there. But for the Bell Tech, Highly recommend it, well worth the price. Seen some great reviews of folks who've been using it for a long time and say they hold up well. I don't think it puts a lot of stress on the walls, uh, except when they're up like that, but even still, uh, I don't think it's that much. Uh, the both units combined weigh about 150 pounds. So I figure each one is 75 pounds. So if you're trying to calculate the weight that you're gonna put into your trailer, that's basically what you got is about 150 additional pounds. My four-wheeler is uh, uh, about a dry weight is about a thousand pounds. So uh, all in, I think this trailer can hold about another 1,800 pounds. So I still have an, an extra 600 pounds to deal with that I'll be working on that project for. Anyway, thanks for watching.